क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोस फ्रॉम ईकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस वीडियो वी आर विद द 11 चैप्टर ऑफ माइक्रोवेव इंजीनियरिंग वेयर द माइक्रोवेव रेजोनेटर्स आर बीइंग एड्रेस्ड एज वी नो दैट एट द रेजोनेंस कंडीशन वी हैव द मैक्सिमम आउटपुट जनरेटेड so we have the microwave signal to be at the resonance condition so as whatever the microwave resonator devices we have in this domain of microwave engineering the performances are very similar if we have the r l and c components arranged either into the series connections or into the parallel connections hence the topics were series resonant circuits and parallel resonant circuits for the devices we have also accounted for the quality factor which are the energy storage with respect to the energy dissipation per unit cycle so now from the last two lectures we are dealing with a section of transmission line with the selected length either lambda by 2 or lambda by 4 where lambda is the wavelength there so it is also acting as the resonator provided the terminations are either short circuited or open circuited so let us have the details for open circuited lambda by 2 transmission line so here we start with our topic open circuited lambda by 2 line here so when we have a practical resonator which is often being used with the help of micro strip lines so practically we come to the condition that we have open circuited such micro strip line so if we have the section of microwave transmission line having the length lambda by 2 provided lambda is the wave length and if we keep the open circuited condition so that time we come to observe the performance of this microwave line section to be that of the parallel resonant circuitry having the rlc components into it so this was the second topic we have dealt in this particular chapter so to look at this particular performance to be like the parallel resonant circuitry when we have open circuited but when we have short circuited for the same line it was supposed to be the similar case of the series rlc resonant circuit connection there and when we have half that particular length to be lambda by 4 for the short circuiting it was the case of parallel resonant circuit so these are all the observations we have obtained for the several times of the experimentation by the different researchers here so let us analyze the input impedance for the case of open circuited lambda by 2 transmission line so in this schematic diagram we consider this transmission line so the transmission line is with the two lines extending from these pair of nodes to these pair of nodes here so let us say in general l is the length of the microwave transmission line and this transmission line is characterized by characteristic impedance z0 along with some content of attenuation accounted into the alpha and the variation of phase accounted into the beta so the together alpha plus j beta will be accounting for the propagation constant denoted by gamma here now at the input side we can be marking the input impedance z in and at the termination we have the open circuited here so no direct connection so in this situation the input impedance in general for the transmission line length l here we have the input condition of the input impedance here z0 the characteristic impedance in multiplication to the hyperbolic cot function here so this is over alpha plus j beta into the line length l here so this is equal to express in the form z0 into the ratio where the numerator is 1 plus j times tangential of beta into l 
into the tangential of hyperbolic function alpha into L. Whereas the denominator is equal to tangential of hyperbolic function over alpha L added to J times tangential of beta into L. So let this representation can be denoted by equation number one for the input impedance Z in here. Now for this representation, if we move further with the assumption that we have the line length L is equal to lambda by 2. We have the frequency omega represented at the resonance level. Omega is equal to omega 0. And we further let that omega is equal to omega 0 added to a small variation into it that it is delta omega here. So that time if we get to the form of beta into L is equal to pi added to pi into delta omega divided by omega 0 here. Along with this representation of beta L, we can move to the taking tangential over this beta into L. We obtain the tan of delta omega pi divided by omega approximated to the form delta omega pi divided by omega 0 since we have assumption that the hyperbolic tangential function over alpha L is approximated to simply alpha L. So now this results into the approximation of input impedance for this case given as characteristic impedance Z0 divided by alpha L added to we have J times delta omega into pi divided by omega 0 here. So as we come to know that such a transmission line with the length lambda by 2 when lambda is the wavelength and it is open circuited it is acting as the parallel RLC resonant circuitry. So let us have the comparison and extract the equivalent components. So the equivalent components will be for the resistance R, the inductance L and that of the capacitance C. So for the equivalent R component, we obtain R in the form characteristic impedance Z0 divided by alpha into L, alpha being the attenuation constant, L being the line length there. So I outline this important equivalent component R. Whereas the component that is required for storage of the electric type of the energy, so it is represented by C and the equivalent in the terms of pi divided by twice of omega 0 into the characteristic impedance the Z0 here. So this can be also outlined here. And the last component that is responsible for the storage of magnetic type of the energy is denoted by L for the inductor component here. So it is equal to 1 upon omega 0 square times C here. So these are the three equivalent components R, L and C at the resonance condition for the given transmission line section for lambda by 2 length and the open circuited condition. While we use such a section of transmission line to have coupling with another external components there it will be the measurement of the quality factor. But while we discard all these external connections and we find the ratio of omega into the energy stored per the energy dissipation per unit cycle, we give it to the form of unloaded quality factor, which can be denoted by Q sub x zero. So for this open circuited lambda by two transmission line, Q sub x 0 is equal to the resonant frequency omega 0 into R into C. So which is equal to pi divided by twice alpha into L. It can also be expressed as beta divided by twice alpha. Since we have the relation for the length of the transmission line to be pi divided by beta as we have the half wave here. So beta can be further expressed to be beta is equal to 2 pi by lambda. Hence, this will be the resultant and finally we obtain this form here. So for 
obtaining increase into the quality factor we should have decrease into the attenuation constant value here so this was all with respect to the open circuited lambda by 2 transmission line by the next lecture we shall be addressing the another topic in continuation to this chapter the topic is titled microwave cavities so up till now we have used the lumped elements or the sections of the transmission lines to have production of the resonance now whatever we have learned as like the waveguides rectangular and that of the circular type here or semicircular also we can have we can get them converted into the cavities so that they can also support the resonance condition so let us see the details into the next lecture so for more such information on to the microwave engineering you can subscribe to ekeda channel thank you